YouTubers continue to build completely out of hand vehicles. And as a member of the car YouTube community, it is my duty to let the public know. Today, we're gonna to be looking at some of the most insane builds that this beautiful platform has ever seen. Starting with, this is the d d d d d First up, Matt Armstrong with one T. Talking about Matt's 2022 Porsche 992 GT Frizzle. Matt with one T is a British cutie that made a name for himself by buying wrecked cars and building them back up to be better and rip harder than they ever did before. Matt has rebuilt a number of crash cars over the years. It's kind of his thing. These cars include an Aston Martin Vantage, a Toyota GT86, a Ferrari 430, and a McLaren 720S, just to name a few. But possibly one of the biggest come-ups was when he found a wrecked 992 GT3 with only four thousand miles on it for 98,000 British pounds, which is some equivalent of American money. He called it the cheapest GT3 in the UK. And I believe him because he's got it on his face. The damage wasn't the worst that Matt has ever tackled. So he gave himself 24 working hours to fix body damage, subframe damage, a bent and cracked ratty otter, and add some carbon fiber pieces. While he and his team were working all of that, he was also wrapping the car in satin black and replacing and repainting a damaged wheel. I encourage you to go watch this video, but that's not gonna keep me from spoiling it for you. He didn't reach the sub 24 hour build mark, but he got to build the car alongside his dad, which doesn't make me jealous at all. Altogether, he spent about $180,000 US, which means that he saved about $80,000 compared to if he were to buy a used 992 with the same specs, which goes for around $260,000. That means he saved about 30%. Good job, Matt. This Porsche is cool, but it only gets crazier from here. Let's put it somewhere in the middle. Up next on our list is the mustachioed emo boy mechanic that goes by the name of Adam LZ and his newest build has got the internet's wet dreams all flowing. Inspired by air-cooled Porsche 911 Safaris, Adam wanted to build an off-road capable car for a Zoomies event at a ski resort, which we were at, by the way. Uh, if you want any donut apparel, go to any Zoomies across the US and get you some. So he began with a parted out R32 GTR that he picked up in Connecticut from Tommy Farrell for $10,000. The car needed an engine. It needed a transmission. It had a whole bunch of rust on her. And it didn't have very much interior to speak of. Luckily for what Adam had planned, he didn't need any of that freaking crap. After the basic needs of the car were out of the way, the engine was modded with bigger cam and cam gears, a new turbo, and the car was most importantly lifted and outfitted with a new front diff for off-roading. As with any build, they ran into a few hiccups along the way. Turns out the hardest part was raising the car. To seal the deal, he equipped it with a Nismo off-road roof rack and front bumper. All right, this thing's freaking wild. It's got a three inch lift over stock. It's got 10 and a half inches of ground clearance, 423 pound feet of twerks at 22 PSI of boost. <laughs> We're going by the crazy scale here. So Safari GTR, definitely crazier. I think we're gonna see crazier stuff though. Working on cars used to be intimidating, but with today's sponsor Keeps, I'm much more confident about the work. You can use Keeps to stop hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or protect the hair you have. They'll even deliver clinically proven treatments right to your front door so you don't ever have to leave your garage. And just like your project car, all treatments are customized to your needs and recommended by a licensed medical provider. But unlike your project car, Keeps is affordable and costs only half the price of a traditional pharmacy. Just remember, hair loss stops with Keeps. To get started with a very special offer, go to keeps.com slash donut media or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash donut media.
Next up, we got a friend of the channel in a car that I've seen with my own two peepers. Talking about Robert Layton and his off-road limousine. 1997 Lincoln Town Car Limo that he purchased to make into a true off-roader. With the help of his pal Owen Barlow, it was initially outfitted with custom axles, suspension, and tires. Not only was this car able to successfully tackle Hell's Gate at Moab, which has a 45 degree incline, it was also able to take his nephew and friends to their prom. Because Robbie is a true Utah family man. He probably likes Diet Coke with milk in it. But they even have cops in Utah. And after being stopped by Utah police, uh, they discovered various aspects of the vehicle that were surprisingly illegal, including having too much lift, and they were ordered to get everything up to code and then get a safety inspection. Rather than undoing all his work, he just bolted some chains to compress the suspension enough to pass. Similar themes. I think the GTR is sicker, though. An old Lincoln limo. Probably gonna hit the crusher, so you might as well. R32 GTR, funnier to do something wild to it. David Andreev, AKA Cyber Hooligan, is a Tesla fan, and I will hold it against him. He wanted to put some more aggressive styling on Elon's power plant, so in July 2022, David purchased a wrecked 2018 dual motor Tesla Model 3 for $14,000 to convert it into a fully custom Roadster. Almost the entire car was changed apart from its skateboard platform. Most of the body panels were replaced with custom ones. The two rear doors were removed. The rear light bar is from a Toyota Venza. And even the windshield angle and the roof line were changed for a more sleek and sharp design a la Roadster. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Looks kind of like a Gallardo, like a Honda Gallardo. A more challenging aspect of the build, apart from all the custom bodywork, was working around the electronics and the battery. Particularly, the welding work required on the floor. Now, the project is almost complete after a year and a half of work, and he's deciding on what color to paint it now. What color do you think you should paint this thing? I vote clear. All right, Cyber Roadster. He built it an entire car. <laughs> Our good friend Cletus has made some wild rubber slanging vehicles over the years on his channel. Well, he's also no stranger to the dunes, but when it came to his dream of ripping a sand rail, no one was willing to rent him one. Apparently, they're very easy to crash. And who knew? Making years and years and years of YouTube videos about you smashing up cars, people are reluctant to lend you stuff. So Cletus threw down $50,000 on Facebook Martin Place to purchase this 700 horsepower sand car with a built LS with a Whipple supercharger on top of it. That's a deal, dude. And you guessed it, this thing was built to rip fat wheelies. Now once he conquered the dunes, Cletus wanted to rip the winter sand. So he took it to Sparks Motors, who outfitted this thing to become a freaking snow rail. Sparks replaced the front tires and skis from a timber sled snow bike in the rears with some beefy tracks to handle all 700 horsepowers. This mod requires redesigning the steering knuckles and unsurprisingly, a whole bunch of custom fabrication. <laughs> Now the project is finished and you can see them ripping this thing up at Heavy D's cabin in some recent videos. It's so sick. Mm. It's not a video about YouTubers building crazy stupid shit without mentioning Grind Hard Plum Co. They've built some insane projects from this massive come and swap purple Bronco to this 100 horsepower mini jet boat and this Hayabusa snow bike. They've been absolutely going off this year. A little while ago, they helped us put a wish.com supercharger on our dearly departed Cabrio. But the most insane build that they are undertaking right now is this seemingly impossible 
off-road chopper built with a KTM 1190 engine that makes 150 to 160 horsepower. And some 46 inch Mickey Thompson mudders sitting on a completely custom frame. Now they discussed taking it to the Rubicon Trail in the first episode, which sounds like the correct amount of sketchy. Now this thing is not done. Apparently it's very hard to build this thing, but they've only been working on this for two months. The hydraulic steering was recently completed. I know that they tried another steering thing that didn't work. Hopefully they pull it off and I cannot wait to see this thing rip on trail. I hope you have a 46 inch helmet. This thing is wild, but I almost think it's crazier to start with an existing vehicle than to build something completely custom if that Makes sense. Friend of the channel, Rich Rebuilds, finally woke up and quit buying Teslas and bought a freaking VW Rabbit pickup, a real man's car. Uh, he wanted a light, small engine that's easy to find parts for to improve its power and speed, which led him naturally to a turbo Hayabusa engine, which he then jammed into the hole that he cut in the bed of the truck. You know, Part taller, easy, reliable. What could go wrong with that plan? Well, surprisingly, uh, he ran into some problems. Number one, the front end was too light and the high boost transmission uh, doesn't have a reverse gear. They solved these issues together by placing an electric motor and a battery in the front to weigh the front end down and also power the front wheels when you put the car in reverse. It's a hybrid. Uh, number two number problem. The drive shaft transmission angle was impossible to get right by simply cutting a hole in the bed for the engine. And they eventually had to cut the entire bed out and build their own subframe. And the drive shaft in this thing is possibly the smallest drive shaft I've ever seen in a vehicle. It's literally cute. I think it's crazier than the safari. Boom. You've heard of this one. Tavares bought this P1 that sustained flood damage in Florida during Hurricane Ian in 2022 for $575,000. Uh, they're $2 million new. His initial plans were to repair the flood damage, get a custom carbon body, bespoke interior, and tune the engine to 1,200 to 1,400 horsepower over its 903 horsepower that it comes with stock. But there is a reason that people don't usually buy flooded vehicles. Tav Man has run into tons of problems. The rear wheels were initially locked up and the car was stuck in lower ride height mode, making it difficult to load on a trailer. Nothing worked. And the car had trapped water and was growing mold and ultimately needed to be cleaned with dry ice. Tavarish traveled to V Engineering in the UK at one point, which is not even in this freaking country, to get parts after McLaren Orlando quoted him 700,000, 53,391.62 dollars for parts. This one. He started the project nine months ago, still hasn't finished, doesn't have fuel tank, doesn't have wiring, which is like a big part of a P1, but it did debut at SEMA last October in the Valvoline booth, and I wish him the best of luck. So I know that he is rebuilding a pretty much stock car, but it's a McLaren P1, still probably my favorite car ever created. So the fact that he bought a flood damaged P1 is still something I'm absolutely jealous of because I remember this car and do pull the trick. Great job, Tav. Casey from Casey's Customs has some wild ideas. His newest being this 1990 CRX with a clean title that he purchased for four hundred dollars. So he had to cut the cross members in the firewall, build a custom frame, all so he could convert this thing to real wheel drive using a 350 small block stroke to 383 cubic inches. Yeah, I said inches and I meant it. The engine sits so low and so far back that this thing could technically be considered mid-engine because it is behind the front axle. And this project has been going on for about four months. He's had tons of custom fabrication and fitment issues, duh. But I see some smoky, smoky, sweet, sweet, burning rubber numbers in this thing's future. As involved, if not more involved, I feel like, than the Roadster. 
I'd say it's cooler than the Roadster though, for sure. Now that you've seen some American muscle getting jammed into a Japanese car, let's see the opposite. Or as Missy Elliott once said, put that thing down, flip it, as you're averting it. Tom's been hard at work making a monstrosity of a vehicle and is hell bent on pissing off muscle car purists everywhere. I like your style, pal. A few years ago, Tom traded in a beat up truck for an abandoned 65 Mustang coupe and started Frankensteining it onto his previously built 1996 Honda Civic based go-kart with a turboed B-series engine that pumps out a rough fur on your herper. For the recent addition of adding a fastback roof of what he calls the Masutengu, he's setting out to rattle the cages of boomer purists at his local Mustang meets. And let me tell you, the reactions are gold. I do like the cocker ball. Okay. Oh. There. We've seen a Chevy motor in a Honda. We've seen a Honda motor in a Ford. But have we seen a dude in blue? We're about to. That dude in blue, likey drifty in car. So he bought an S13 coupe in 2016 that was swapped with a 1JZ with the intention of doing a drift build. The car was a nightmare from the very beginning. The VIN on the title was wrong. Uh, it was leaking a ton of coolant. Tons of stuff was zip tied. When he finally got the title sorted, the engine failed. So he decided to take on a long-term build project and to install a Coyote engine from a Ford Mustang since fixing the 1JZ in transmission was the same price as buying a new crate engine from Fjord. The project was exceptionally difficult, all right? The custom fabric for the 1JZ had to be undone and new custom fabric was needed to fit the new Coyote engine. But the garage that he hired to do a lot of the work did a bad job including forgetting to put fluid in the dip, cutting too much out of the firewall to fit the transmission, and improperly installing the engine mounts. You know, the things that keep the engine mounted. So essentially, he had to start over again. This build took David Patterson seven years. That's before we even did the first up to speed. He's been working on this freaking car. It's not that crazy. It's a crazy story more than it is a crazy car, but it is a cool car. I think that's about right. You've seen his Ranger monster truck. You've seen his off-road Corvette. You know the smoke stain. But now Weston is making something truly extraordinary that he will eventually break off-road. He's chefing up an off-road capable 2017 Hellcat. Now, so far, the car has received new axles, a transfer case, meaning it's all wheel drive, a turbo 400 transmission, and a custom suspension for a 21 inch lift to fit 35 inch tires. 35s on a Hellcat. No, I'm not talking about a Trailhawk. With a lift that big, he discovered that he needs to totally modify the transmission to fit said beefy transfer case. Uh, duh much? So this thing is converted to four wheel drive, Got custom frame rails and suspension, 21 inch lift, 35 inch tires, big old fat axles, turbo 400 transmission, transfer case from a 92 Chevy pickup. This thing is a uh, nuts. Wow. You guys know the Boosted Boys, everyone's favorite Colorado, Florida transfers. They made a really fast Honda Odyssey called the Routacy. Their K-swapped Odyssey with a fat turbo on it makes over 1,000 horsepower. Well, apparently that wasn't enough for our friend Kyle. Kyle wasn't satisfied with having the fastest Honda Odyssey in the world. So he built another minivan sleeper. Kyle discovered that the wheelbase of a Honda Odyssey was extremely similar to his Tesla Plaid. So he cut off all the body panels of the Plaid and threw the Honda Odyssey body on top of it. All right, so now Kyle has two Odysseys that lay down sub 10 second quarter miles. But for you EV haters out there, you'll be happy to know that when Kyle put them head to head in a drag race, the gas powered Odyssey put down a 9.5 second quarter mile with a top speed of 153 miles per hour and beat out the Plaid Odyssey by fractions of a second. I'd say it's up there with uh, Weston. 
Brian Krause wanted to transform a 1999 Porsche 911 into a more modern interpretation of Porsche's 930 and 964 slant nose cars from the 80s and 90s. Okay, Ryan is a bodywork wizard, and all body panels were custom made using traditional metal shaping tools mixed with modern 3D scanning technology, as were the LED headlights and the rear diffuser. And not only did he make one of these freaking things, you can buy one of them. And they'll install nearly any Porsche engine you like if you commission them to build you one. But in theirs, they've swapped a 3.6 liter GT3 race engine. They are also building a V8 swapped, quote, junkyard supercar out of a scrapped Carrera chassis that will be built to look like a lost supercar from the 1960s. K-Truck cute, right? Yeah, K-Truck cute. K-Truck slow, no, right? Wrong! Nick Clark of the Live and Learn YouTube channel has strapped a jet engine out of an L29 jet and has teased the build on his Instagram. And if you think that this thing isn't gonna run, think a freaking again. What are you having a being wrong contest? He's already done one of these bad boys on a boat. We actually had made the entire list for this video and then we saw this thing on Instagram and we're like, okay, we have a new number one. Because it's not that hard, honestly. You just put a thing in the car. Congratulations to our winners. You'll all receive a prize. Check your mailbox every day. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel. Go to Zoomies and get yourself some donut apparel. We make clothes because I like clothes and I'm allowed to make them. I love you guys. Bye.